Indoor air pollution is the world's biggest environmental problem. It kills 4.3 million people. And you're saying, what the hell is indoor air pollution? It's the fact that almost 3 billion people, almost half this world's population, cook and keep warm with dirty fuels like wood, dung, cardboard, whatever they can get their hands on. The average hut in the developing world is 10 times more polluted than the outdoor in Beijing. You don't hear that because it's not a good media story. It just happens to affect almost 3 billion people. The World Health Organization estimate is the equivalent of smoking two packs of cigarettes every day for all those 3 billion people. Not surprisingly, 4.3 million people die each year. And then, of course, remember, this is just environmental problems. Uh, oh, I should just say, people are also worried about uh, 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 global warming. Sure, it's small, but it'll get much bigger. Well, the World Health Organization has actually estimated what's the death toll going to be in 2050. And yes, it is going to be a little bit bigger, but it's not something that will really change the conversation. This is just environmental problems. Let me just take you one step further and talk about what are the biggest problems in the world. These are all the things I just showed you before, but on a different scale. The biggest problem, by far, is poverty. About 18 billion people, sorry, million people die each year from poverty. Of course, there's a, oh, there starts to be an overlap here. You can't actually separate some of, these, uh, some of these numbers. But fundamentally, poverty is a big issue. And so if you, from the goodness of your heart, focus on saying, oh, I'm going to help all these poor people in the world by putting up a solar panel, when the, what they were asking for were very different things. You have not done what would be the best to do. And that's why I'm just going to leave you with one more thing. We actually asked the world what they want us to focus on. The UN uh, in 2015 wanted to do targets for the next 15, world, uh, for 15 years for the world, and they asked almost 10 million people, what do you want us to prioritize? This is the result. It's been moved from the main page of the UN because they didn't like the result. Uh, but you can still find it on uh, datamyworld2015.org. Um, and this is the result. They told us, not surprisingly, they want education, health, jobs, corruption, no corruption, and nutrition. Those are the things they really care about. And at the very bottom, uh, 16 out of 16, they say, oh, yes, we also care about global warming. So again, my point here is not to say don't worry about global warming. My point here is not to say, don't worry about the environment, but my point here is to say, you guys are data-driven guys. You don't just take a cute story and say, oh, I'll run with that. You actually demand evidence for it. Yeah. Would you like to live in Holland below sea level with rising sea levels and then talk about death figures and air pollution? I would love to live in Holland, wouldn't most of you guys? Holland is 1.7 meters below sea level and is an exact example of how, if you get rich, you actually figure out how to live with sea level rise. The real problem is that a lot of people go to Bangladesh and then say, we actually did a big study in Bangladesh just last year, but people go to Bangladesh and say, oh God, you guys are poor, you don't have enough food, you have a terrible malnutrition, you don't have good education, let's give you a solar panel because that's going to keep you from flooding in 100 years. No, if you looked at what I just showed up here, if we do everything we promise at Paris, we will still see sea levels rise, but it'll rise slightly less by the end of the century. So what we're te essentially telling the Bangladeshis is, look, you guys, you've got to stay poor, and yes, you'll get lots of problems 2100, but it'll be this much less by the end of the century, instead of focusing on making them Holland. Because if they become Holland, they're able to tackle all the issues. During the uh, presidential election, um, let's say President Trump has been, let's say, champion in actually making it difficult to understand what's truth and what's false. And that actually made the times that it's truth death. And just like to ask you, because during the, during the election, we saw him saying climate change is a hoax invented by China. He has moderated it a bit. And recently I saw you did an article where you say, well, hold on. Trump might actually be good for the climate discussion. Why do you think that? So I was arcing right after he'd been elected, and a lot of people were like, this is the end of the world. And I was simply saying, look, it's not the end of the world to stop a Paris agreement that's going to cost one to two trillion dollars and virtually do no good. If he focuses instead on investing a lot more in research and development, he could actually end up being good. But he wants to coal. Well, he, he wants to invest a lot in, in, in infrastructure, so this was conceivable. I'm not seeing any hopeful signs right now, so no, I don't think he's going to 
particularly good. I don't think he's going to be particularly bad on climate either because he's essentially saying, let's spend the money elsewhere. I would like him to spend some of the money. And remember, for instance, Bill Gates and many others are investing in research and development exactly because they're saying that is the way that we can fix climate change. So I'm happy that they are doing it. I'm sorry that Trump is still not uh, spending money there, but wasting it on the Paris Agreement, wasting on lots of solar panels and wind turbines that's going to do almost it's no good. It's funny when you say really wasting the on the Paris Agreement, it's just the top leaders of the world in science are saying this will be a pivotal yeah, step. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, but I really admire your, of course, your point of view. But, but look, it's not like world leaders have a monopoly. And in the scientists truth. either. Mon well, well, look, there's, <laughs> There's two things to this. So world leaders want to get elected. So you will say nice things and you will support stuff that is stupid. But the second thing is, <laughs> if, if you and are... And what about climate scientists? Do they want to be elected? But, and, and climate scientists, and you're, you're absolutely right, climate scientists are telling us global warming is real, and they're absolutely right. They're also telling us you should focus on this and you should be spending money on this. This is not their area of expertise. An atmospheric scientist is not an expert on what is smartest to do economically. But of course, they are telling us we should spend money on their area. Just like if you ask a doctor, should we spend more money on hospitals? Yes. And teachers, should we, should we spend more money on uh, schools? Yes, of course. And that's why we need this conversation of saying not just you have an important issue, but saying, what is my money going to buy of solutions? And that's the problem that I think we're still missing in this conversation.